stem cell is basically a cell that is in every person. Everyone's made of stem cells. And the basic definition of a stem cell is it has the ability to renew itself and also become every tissue type in your body. And throughout your life, there's always stem cells in you. The most common ones everyone's familiar with is in your bone marrow. Your bone marrow stem cells help make blood, platelets, and other parts of you. But even your skin has stem cells. Every seven days, your skin renews its outer layer. Your intestinal tract, and even your heart. Your heart has its own stem cells, but it's a lot slower. It takes about five years for all the stem cells to turn over the heart. The stem cell therapy for cardiovascular disease has actually gone into patients a little over six years ago. So it's still fairly new. But the science behind it is relatively simple right now, that we're hoping that the heart, which is basically a pump, it makes some hormones and things like that, but basically it's to pump oxygenated blood throughout your body and then get deoxygenated blood and send it to the lung so it could get oxygenated. But patients, as they get older, and they could get coronary disease, they could get viruses, and their heart becomes weaker after heart attacks and other problems. So our goal with cell therapy is how can we give the heart cells back that actually make it go stronger, work harder, and actually function like a younger heart, like it probably was 20 years before the disease set in. In our case, we've actually started with taking the patient's own cells, which are probably the safest. And we've taken different techniques of where we used to take bone marrow stem cells and inject them directly into the heart. The problem with that was is that we needed to take almost up to 500 cc's or two cups of blood to get the quality and the number of cells we've needed. We've been able to reduce that now to three tablespoons and still get the same number and quality of cells and still inject them directly into the heart. And we've been able to do this with surgical techniques, catheter-based techniques, and actually apply it to different parts of the body. So when I really say I work with cardiovascular disease, I also have limb ischemia trials that, so people who have pain in their legs, and it's also from a lack of oxygen or insufficient blood flow. The technique and the rationale for the cell types are very similar. We want the cells to make new blood vessels so we could carry oxygen. In the heart, we want that as one technique, and the other one is actually, can we make the weak heart muscle stronger again? So it's a combination effect. And because of that, we actually use a combination of different cell types. So not just blood vessel making cells or heart muscle making cells, but a combination of things. And what's great about stem cells is they're like small bioreactors. You put them into the area that has disease, they sense the local environment, and they sell out, send out homing beacons. And then cells and growth factors and everything from you around your body will come to the site of injury. So in this case, if someone's had a really bad heart attack and their muscle's really weak to the point that they go into heart failure, then once we inject the cells, they will recruit other cells' growth factors to actually make the heart stronger and increase the blood supply. We also have that for patients who have chronic chest pain. So these are poor patients, there's six million of them in the US, who've had maximal bypass surgery and stenting, yet they continue to have chest pain. And the chest pain is caused by a lack of oxygen to muscle that's still alive. So we actually have FDA approved therapies already that are minimally invasive treatments for patients with chronic angina.